my demo today about the data migration. Uh, last few months, I was exploring some of the migration that we have and also look at, into the underlying APIs. And I realized there is view limitations from my understanding, but you can correct me. Uh, if we look into the migration right now, maybe they uh, are easy for simple migration, but it is hard for big one because there are some issues in real readability and maintainability. If I look to one of the examples, like the audit trail, this may be look very simple, but if someone look to someone, to one like this in the user migration, I think it is sometimes hard to read and to follow. And uh, another issue, I think we are relying on the reflection maybe because the naming convention came from Orchard 1, I think. We are using number at the end of each method. Also from extensibility point, I think both iData migration and data migration are hosted in data.yesql assembly. I'm not sure why. Uh, I think it will be nice if we move the iData migration into the data orchard.data assembly. So, and the default implementation, sure, sure it will be in the yes SQL assembly. So, I did a simple prototype here uh, to solve or resolve these uh, above limitations. And also, one more thing I forget the cleanup. I didn't see for now. Uh, if someone run a lot of migration or single migration, I'm not sure how you guys clean up the migration for any reason. So for that, uh, I did a simple prototype by splitting the migration that allow you to split the migration into multiple files. So it will be easy to read, and easy to maintain. Also, there are no reflection anymore. I, where is the sample here? If we look to this migration, for instance, one just for a demo. This one, I think it is clear. There is a migration attribute and you can specify the version one, two. It depends on the migration identifier or the version. And you have both up and down, something similar like entity framework. And whenever you have the default, sorry, the default one is you put your code in the up, so it will be applied when the migration is run. And down, if it is necessary, like dropping the table or dropping the indexes and so forth. And also I have view other migration, like zero two. So each one, I think it is separated from the others. Uh, one more thing uh, from the, the ABI point of view, I created an I migration uh, interface in the data. So the default implementation will be yes SQL. Then if someone else tried to use entity framework or any other data access, he can implement the default uh, migration and it should work like this one. Where is it? For example, I think there is another migration here into another module. Where is it? it is here? This one. If you notice here, this is a default migration, but if we look to the previous one, like this one, maybe the name is weird. Maybe we can call the data migration, but show you this is the yes sql implementation but this one uses the default implementation and both are working fine uh, now let us try this on action when i log it in i go to the features for example, 
when I enable the migration for the first time, I call the installing async and it will try to migrate relate. If we go to the database and refresh the tables, there should be a product table shows up and also there's an entry here that shows the screen for me. It's just me or everyone? What? The screen is still frozen Sorry? in the features page for me. Is it the same? Yeah, it's freezing. Oh, <coughs> now yeah. I'm on Now we switched. Page. OK. Yep. Sorry, maybe there's a delay. Now, okay. if we note, there is a, a product table added, and also there is a migration entry, a single migration entry for the applied migration. And if we go again to the Graphitar module and I enable this one, again, it will execute the migrations. Three migrations should be. When I go to database, there should be a customer's table, for instance, added. And also, there should be another view entries added. Three migrations. Okay, one, two, three. That come from that module. Uh, what else uh, now? Which is, I think, the important one. When I go again to the, sorry, to the graph. There is an option that you can disable, which is by default to enable or disable the feature. And there's another option to kind of uninstall that disable the features and clean all the related migration or data from database. So when I hit disable and wipe, yes, it will call uninstall async and it will roll back all the migration from database. And again, hopefully if we go here and refresh, the customer table is gone. Also, all the migration entries are going to. I think that's it. Just a simple prototype to show that it works. Any feedback is welcome. The migration updater is the same as before? Yeah, uh, one more thing. Regarding, uh, uh, nope. If you notice here, all the migration in the Orchard core are should be here. Okay. At the first time I integrated with the other migration and it worked fine, but for one reason, I think. And I will show you just where is it? Just for this reason, I'd like to use long instead of integer. For that, I created another entry. But if I use the integer value like the orchard, I can use the same entry and it should work fine. And you have both option if you wanna use the uh, new default in orchard is long it's not integer yeah. for new sites i think it is integer oh, no for new instances it's long for existing instances it's uh integer maybe maybe because i'm using uh, the new git package for that oh, yeah, i don't have that thing yeah, it's yes. brand new uh, yeah Maybe uh, that's it. Also, from API perspective, there is an abstraction here. There is a simple interface I migration which has up and down, and there is an abstract class called migration. And uh, where is it in the SQL? There is an implementation which simply has schema builder, something exactly similar to what we have in Orchard Core. So anyone want to use the yes SQL migration, he can 
use the advantage of schema builder. And if you notice here in the example, which I show you, this one is using schema builder that all we know, but this one not. Where is it? Yes, this one not because I use the uh, default migration, so I could use Dabber or uh, any data access library you want. Uh, lots of questions and comments when you're oh, ready. Okay, all the feedback are welcome. Okay, um, I think I think it is done. So the, you started with a question about why is it done this way? So I will tell you and then it will also answer and comment on what you do. It's okay. done, you ask first, why is it numbers like update from one, two, three, four, five? E, e, yes. Okay. So when we started that design and that migration, mm. there was no such thing as entity framework migrations. We were the first to have those migrations in the There okay. was no such thing as the, um, there is another framework right now like that uses up down also. I don't remember the name that has data migration. It's why it didn't exist either. So we we didn't have a product that could be reused, but it was in all true already. Oh, thank okay. you. Uh, thank you, Antoine. DB up. That's good now. So Thanks. We designed something. Okay? Thanks. And you know, I say we mostly Louis and and I joined when I joined, I I know it was not yet done when I joined the project. So yeah, I was part of design, but mostly Louis de Jardin was the architect of Fortune at that time. It was uh, 13 years ago or 14 years ago. So it, it was very old. But why is it done this way? I see an issue when I see up down. When I see up down, you have to create a down for each up. Okay. So it means that if you have five migrations and each of them creates a colon, then you will run five downs, which each of them will delete a colon and then delete the table. So I don't know how you can handle the fact that you can just run one down, which is just delete the table. That's the first comment. The second comment of this design is that where in the UI do you say go down by one? No, you go down for everything. Yeah. So, so in this case, you can't optimize for down for everything. With our design, there is one down. It's called cleanup. I don't know if you saw that, but in the data migration interface, there is a cleanup function. Oh, it's by convention. So by reflection, if you have a cleanup method, we will call it on and so. So the today is just that nobody has implemented cleanup for anything, but it's there. You can call cleanup. I like your ID that is disable the feature and optionally run the cleanup. That's great. And maybe it could be already done with the current implementation. So if you look at the reflection, you should find something that. Uh, uh, so you see the issue with up down is that it's almost too granular because you have so many downs to call and also you have so many ups like you have to call all the ups with the one return number pattern what we do is when we create an update from three we can also update the create method such that if it's the creation we just have one step to run to have the correct status. We don't have to run all the ups. So that, that that's why I think it's interesting to have this create update from and and so okay, you commented that. That's great. Is that no? You didn't write that. It's us. It's in the documentation. So whoever wrote the documentation gets the thing here. Uninstall and uninstall async. So okay. maybe we should yeah. So it's, so I think the design here for Orchard and that's typical for anti framework. Maybe it's different. For other application, maybe it's different, but I like the design that there is a very specific entry point that's called create that lets us run it once and say skip everything else by returning 10. So it won't run the update from one to update from nine and then return 10 because we know that, okay, by with create, it's, it's perfect. We don't need to do all the individual updates, but we still have all the individual updates for the people who come from an existing status. And even update from one can 
just do one thing and then say, OK, you're up to date. You don't need to run the two, three, four, five. So that's very powerful, I think, in terms of um, granularity, because it might be dangerous to go from one, two, three, four, because one might create a colon, two might delete the colon, three might lose some data because of the migration process, and it might be cumbersome. So it's good to be able to run one thing that returns the correct status because it knows how to optimize it. You see what I mean? Compared to up, down. Um, so that's one thing. I like the fact that you separate GSQL from the migration. I will do, do it differently though, but that, that's a good option. I mean, to have the GSQL migration, that's good. And maybe what you could do is have, uh, is use uh, the I instead to inject the, the data schema, the I or I GSQL migration, for instance, in any migration class. Because the way you did it for entity framework, you don't have a base class for entity framework. So I wonder why you might not want to do that also for a migration where you could use both the SQL and Entity Framework and Dapper and whatever you want just by using the I when you need it. So that might be a, a way to do that. Just so I agree, remove move the migrations out of SQL, but have the SQL migration the thing that can provide uh, the schema builder because if you use SQL for some module, then you used to be able to you need to be able to create a tables, document, and so forth. So so um, so that what else? I'm sorry, I'm not letting you talk. You want to talk? <laughs> <laughs> One more thing uh, regarding uh, your comment uh, by running all the apps. I think we uh, I follow the same uh, what EF did it will check the applied migration so if one of these migration is already applied it will not call up anymore i agree i'm not saying that sorry i'm uh, i'm just saying now if nothing is applied okay. you have a new site what what yeah. does it run it will run okay oh yes it will learn okay. all now, the and, and then another one. So this is the first argument. And then the other yeah. argument is you're on version five and you have 10 more versions to run. It will run from five to 15, okay? Yeah. If you yeah. have our model, you can say, no, you're from five, run this one, and then you are up to date. You don't need to run the next one because I know how to tell you from five to the perfect state. You, you see, that's something else we can do with that EF count. Yeah. So that's why I think it's our model is actually is actually better in this way to optimize a migration. Yeah, exactly. um, obviously, people oh. usually run it as soon as there is a new update. They update, they update it, so there is one up every time they update their process, their their, their feature. It's not like oh, we have ten things to update, ten steps. But in Orchard. It's, it's how it works because people will migrate from 1.0 to 1.5 and then the crate knows how to do everything. So it's better to just run the crate or, or yeah, I, I think it's, it's a good one. I like the, the thing we do. Um, one one okay. comment, just, I mean, I, I don't have a, a biased opinion here, but one thing with the up and down that could be more, has more advantage is that maybe you can register these migration to a specific version. Like if you're uh, upgrading from version four to a version five, right, instead of running all the migration, regardless of, you know, so you can only target the migrations that you want, right? Because right now, if I, let's say we roll out version 1.6, right? And then I realize there's a big problem. I need to roll back to a previous image. Well, the database, I can't roll it back. Right. So I think that's one disadvantage of having the one, two, three, four. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying there is no down path yes, from there. I agree. From, uh, oh, but, yes. but yeah, there is no down path because we don't have the notion of step up, step down. Yeah. Right. We run, run, make me up to date to the code or clean everything. There is no, yeah. and that's why we tell people just back up your database before you do an upgrade. That's also how we handle the rollback, back up your database. Uh, I agree. 
but then then also it, it would mean that we can only have uh, an up method that is granular. So, so if you want to be able to run one up and one down, everything has to be in one up and in one down. This could be doable. Yep. I think this could be doable, but it needs a lot of work oh, in the UI. No, I'm not saying it's good to have. Like, it's not even good because still, even if you had that, that and, I mean, it's not about not being able to do that because what you did is does that. What I'm saying is that when we ship one six, yeah. every migration sh should have only one up, so we can go back only one down to one five. And and sometimes we can't do that because sometimes we have like in between one five and one six, we have three different migrations to run because we need three different changes and people use that and they need to be able to upgrade from that state. I know, so I'm not saying it's a good thing to have one up and one down. Even the UI doesn't show that. Like, I I think it's, yeah, I don't know. Okay, thank you. Our migrations are not linked to our versions that we ship. That's why yeah. we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just a number. Yeah, that's the yeah. yes. status. And I still like the create, the uninstall, and the, and the updates from to be able to skip th things. One thing I'd like to have in Orchard, by, compared to our current model, is, is that when a migration class is here, that it runs. So we have like a, a, a zero, that means I've been run once, um, even if create hasn't been called. Like, and when we install the feature, then create is called. But at least we know because we we are missing the fact that uh, it was run, it was installed, be, not installed, maybe installed. But we are missing a, a pre-initialization value, like not written from create. I don't remember the, the case. I hope John will remember, but it, it's obvious when we build migrations that uh, I don't know why, but yeah, the fact that there is a migration class, but nothing run, that would be interesting to know that it's there and store it in database, like store zero somewhere or minus one, just to know that we notice there is a class, but we haven't run anything yet. Fine, something like that. Um, I think we are missing that. Uh, okay. So what else? Okay, but I think uh, one pro and when I use the current migration, maybe some others, is the number. If you okay missing the number of you by accidentally, but another number, for example, you want to create uh, to put two and put the three, I think it, it will be problematic. So I think here someone could be careful with this number because it is by convention. Okay. So how do we fix it? What what uh, what? How do we <laughs> So, the, so uh, let, uh, let me. Michel, uh, uh, yeah, I, I think if you want to improve this, there's a couple ways. First of all, if <laughs> you use from from two, you can't return uh, two because otherwise you're going to create an infinite loop, right? Yep. So if there's Correct. an infinite loop, maybe you can just throw an exception so that way someone can fix yep. it. That's one way. Another way to improve the data migration, that's just me personally, is create mm -hmm. something called something like update two six or seven or whatever which is used to down from one to another so like if you want to down if you want to undo or roll back a change to kind of undo the changes i think that you would can't. be very helpful that, that's what my point earlier how do you roll back what where do you type the number 26 or two or three how back do you roll back how many steps do you roll back i don't i don't know how to say I don't know if you know as a user, and then how do you enter that? How do you say you click rollback and and the code is like, how much do you want me to roll back? Yeah. I mean, we would know. We would know the the status. Right? We so wait, wait. Well, we, it's we, in we. database, right? But it ran like five five steps. Okay. So imagine I have one six. I install Ultra 1.6, and one of the migrations are, has 15 steps. 
like two from Orchard 1, 1, three for, from Orchard 1, 2, zero from Orchard 1, 3, and so on. Okay, and it's currently the step uh, update from 15. Now you say roll back. Where does it roll back to? To 1, 5, oh. to the migration that was installed in 1, 5? No, because we are not linked to the version. Like you might have created your own module that is in Orchard 1, 5, 1, 6, okay? And your own module has went through 50 different migrations on 1, 6. So when you say rollback, do you roll back from one day, one week, one migration? I, I, that doesn't mean anything. Roll back. Maybe, maybe we need a way to be able to link a migration to a version, a release version. So you I, can say, hey, go ahead and I, I, so, I'm not sure what's the right answer, but yeah. I think it's a problem we have and, and it can be approved. So someone needs to think about a, a good way could, to roll we back. We could say, we could say at some point, uh, take a snapshot to say, this is the migration status. And it will take the number of all of the migration classes. And then you can run your migration and say, go, go back all migrations to the previous status. So, and you go down up to the versions where you said st store the status right now. Like I'm about to do migrations. Remember where you are right now because I might want to go back. But imagine you need to have a down for each of the ups we have. This is what uh, yes. Isham is suggesting. And uh, but we don't, can't even sometimes we can't even do that because sometimes we jump because we know we can go faster to the last step. So we don't know how to go down to each of the steps. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's even easier for me to just say back up the database and if you have an issue, restore the database. Yeah, that's also not an easy, uh, that's not an easy thing if you have many or big databases. I mean, and, I and then it, but I'm just saying to some people do. Could, and it's called also be files and, and not just yes. database. So that's yes. hard to, to, that's why I'm saying, yeah, let's not try to be more clever than what it is to to do something <laughs> correct when we when we do a migration of a product like yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, going back to the naming and the fact that we uh, what did I say about the naming? Yeah, the from two, from three, and so on. Maybe we could change that and have attributes like you can name your method the way you want, but there is an attribute that says this is the the number or this is the name, and then you can return the name of the next step, which is based on an attribute, maybe. So it's not like by convention that your method has to be named this way. Uh, yes. So there is re less, ref there is still reflection, but maybe less. Maybe we could have something that is based on attributes. And so how do you, how did you say that you are not handling by reflection? Be oh, because there are attributes on the class, because they have one method, okay. Um, Maybe we could have that. Maybe we could have each migration be a different class that you call whatever you want. And yeah. it just has uh, one method that is always the same and returns always an integer like we do today. Yeah. Or the name of the next migration to, to execute or the status. So maybe something less based on reflection and that will work the same as today and will probably be compatible with what we have in the database. So we are not missing anything. So I'm totally okay with that. Um, but you can't have an up down. You could use the I still. It should not be in yes SQL module. You should be able to inject some yes SQL thing to access the data schema, the yes SQL schema, whatever. I don't know how it's called. Uh, you could use the F. So you could have five classes that will run one after the other, one using yes SQL, one using the F, one using the both of them. Um, they could all have a cleanup method or an install or whatever. Uh, and you can go, you can you can skip also. So you can return something that will skip migrations. Yes. So, you are, so when you have something, you can say, OK, I'm done. Uh, and the attribute will say what is the order. OK, I like it. Uh, it can be any number. OK, I, I like it. And and your name of the class will can tell you what is number, but we we rely on the on the attribute. But the naming of the class could have a number. I don't like the, the 
So I, in EF, the name in the class, in the file, defines the order. I don't like it. I prefer to have the migration. Uh, but at the same time, it, to be able to understand how, it, how it's built, when you look at the file system, it, it might be better yes. to just have. OK, we don't use that, but it's by convention to order the things. OK. And you can give it a name and comment on what it's OK. I see. OK. Yeah, so that that are good ideas. I think to remove more, to remove some conventions that are cryptic, like from two, from three. Uh, would be great also to have. Um, would the cleanup? Yeah, the cleanup will also return yes. the version to go down because you could clean up from five and say when you have run the cleanup, you don't have to run anything. Or you could say return four because you say, okay, you have to run now the cleanup form four because I don't want to run that. Four does that. Yeah. Okay. So a method, a method to execute, a method to clean up. So which is down, but it's not calling down. It's clean up and you return where to go next when you clean up. Uh, the first migration is a create, but it's not called create, it's just the first migration. So I like it, I would like it. Yeah, well, you can continue on this effort based on our feedback if you want. Uh, also, really also, I, yeah, but. also, I think it will be nice if we have a kind of clean up or wiping data from the UI because mm -hmm. yes, if sometimes, think, because sometimes we the, are yeah. suffering. Yes. When you're trying to clean up I understand. your migration. I get it. Okay, so thank you. Now that's a good idea, good effort, uh, Isham, to, to discuss the design of some things, and uh, I like it. I like it. And also based on the on the usage, right? Because this, this design has been taken from 13 years ago. So in the meantime, there's been 30 years of people using that and giving feedback. I think Orchard Core using in hibernative. Um, Orchard one was using an Hibernate, yes. Ah, yes, it's Orchard one. Sorry, there's no notion of migration there. Uh, no. Okay, thank you. 